Hello everyone, welcome to the kinematics and dynamics of machinery class. Um, in today's video, I'm going to give you more examples uh, on the kinematics analysis of mechanisms using the complex algebraic method. We, in the previous video or the previous lecture, we already discussed the uh, the position, velocity, and acceleration analysis in general, and we give one example very quick. In this video or today's lecture, we're gonna cover, you know, like more examples, we're gonna solve them and see as more practice on the complete kinematic analysis of mechanisms. And let us start with the first example here <coughs> that we already given this mechanism which is a slider crank mechanism. This type of mechanism is commonly known as slider crank mechanism, where, for example, we gonna say, we gonna find that this should be the crank. This should be the crank of the mechanism. As we discussed one, once before, that basically this how it works, that we set up here like an electrical motor that gives rotation, 360 degree rotation for the crank and this is just connecting link and this is the slider so that's why this mechanism is commonly known as slider crank mechanism okay and it is used in so many machines so that's why it is one of the important mechanism that we are going to consider through this course and for this given mechanism uh, the crank rotates which is this part which is o b o a o two a uh, link the crank rotates with a constant velocity. We mentioned once before in case that he mentioned constant velocity or uniform velocity. It means there is no acceleration because the definition of the acceleration that it should have uh, the velocity change, changes over time. Since we have the velocity constant, it means that there is no acceleration because the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So the velocity is constant, there is no acceleration. And the value of the angular velocity or the velocity of the of the crank it is given by 30 radian per second. Since the unit is already radian per second, it means that intuitively this should be angular velocity. It is not necessary that he mentioned here the is it linear velocity or angular velocity. You can if you just have a look to the unit you're gonna realize that should this should be omega as angular velocity. So we're gonna say that the angular velocity of this mechanism is already given by uh, 30 radian per second. And the angular velocity and, acceler and angular acceleration of the link AB, it is required, they are required, it is required to find the velocity and angular acceleration of link AB. And the absolute velocity and acceleration of slider B, in addition to the absolute velocity and acceleration of point C. It doesn't matter what are the exactly the requirement. The key idea when you read the question is just to decide uh, whatever you're going to consider theta as a given value or you're going to consider theta as, um, you know, like a symbol uh, in the symbol form and, uh, and carry on the problem or solve the problem in terms of theta 2, then you're going to block with two values of the theta 2 as we discussed before in another video regarding the position analysis. Basically, we have to do so in case that it is required to find the displacement of a point or the, uh, the position of a point at two different configurations of the mechanism. Since this is not the case, so in case that theta 2 is already given by a value, directly substitute with this value and there is no need to deal with theta 2 like it is unknown. Make sense? So I've added here uh, some given data regarding this mechanism, like theta 2 is already given by 30 degrees. So as I mentioned directly in this problem, we can substitute for theta 2 equal 30 degrees, and there is no need to consider theta 2 is like in the symbolic form and find all the unknown in terms of theta 2 because we have to solve for only one configuration for one theta, which is just theta to equal 30 degree. So directly to make it easy and simple, just substitute directly for theta to equal 30 degrees. In addition, R0802 is already given, which is the length between or the distance between O2 and A is already given by 2.5 inches in addition to the RAC, which is the distance between points points A, A and C is already given by 2.5 and the RAB is already given by 10 inches. In addition, there is an offset distance. We discussed this once before that we said that basically the conventional 
Slider crank mechanism should have O2 is already over the same horizontal line located over the same line uh, with point B, which is this for the slider itself. But here we do have an offset between them. They're like there is a difference between the line of uh, or point two in addition to the line of action of or work of the slider itself. So this distance is commonly known as the offset distance as we discussed, what, discussed once before, okay? And there are some requirements, so we're gonna stick to the procedure. And the procedure basically, if you remember that we have to uh, draw the mechanism in the given configuration. The given configuration here that theta two is already equal to 30 degrees, and it means that this should be located in the crank, it should be oriented in the first quadrant, and this is what we already have. It means that this given configuration, it makes sense. It makes sense that this is the current configuration that we are considering through this problem. So that's why uh, we can directly set up the position vectors and then we can, uh, you know, like draw the mechanism. So if we decided to set up the position vector, uh, we normally uh, agreed that we give number to the different, you know, like links or the different uh, components of this mechanism, starting with the ground, which is uh, directly we give it number like one, and we do have the crank, which is link two, in addition to the link three, which is the link AB, in addition to the slider, which is gonna take a number like link four, like a link four or like a, an element four, okay? Then we have to set up position vector, and we said that, for example, for this crank, it is, it is advised to have the position vector for this link to be projected out of O2. Why is O2? Because it is a fixed point. So we can have R2 in this direction, but it doesn't matter which is the direction that you're going to choose for the link EB because it has no fixed point. So it's up to you. You can assume any direction for link EB. So let us assume this direction as R3 vector. How about the slider? We said that we should have an R that is set up uh, in the same line of action or the sliding direction of the slider itself. So we're going to have here like R and we give it, we're going to give it a number as R4 because it refers to the slider itself. Try to stick or refer or define the position vectors with the same number of the link that you already assigned. Because the derivatives of these position vectors with respect to time, this is what give the velocity components or the and the acceleration component of this link or this element of this mechanism. So for example, the derivative of R4, this should give us the velocity of the slider. Why the slider not some something else? Because R4 refers, we defined R4 for the slider. So anything that related to the R4, it is automatically related in the uh, to the slider. Uh, so, but the same issue applies for the R2, R2, anything that, that is related to the R2 is automatically related to the link or the crank O2A. The same thing applies to the R3. As you can see, we do have a loop, but this loop is not closed, it is open. So it means that we have to close. So that's why we're gonna close this loop with a link with an extra position vector, which refers, which refers only to the offset distance between O2 and B as a vertical distance, which is already given by 1.5 inches. So we're gonna set up here like R1, because this is just offset, and you can assume R1 in, e in either direction, either going up or going down, it's up to you, you can assume any direction. So we let us agree over these directions. As I said, there are, there are generally you can switch any position direction, but there are some fixed direction that we, advice to use them, which like R2 and R4, we said that R4 it is better to come from a fixed point going to the slider because it's going to refer to the sliding motion of the slider. R2 should be predicted or it is preferred to be projected from the fixed point like O2. But for R3, R1, it's up to you. Can you assume any other direction? It's up to you. Okay, now let us look at these directions here over the schematic of the mechanism. Uh, that I already prepared here. So this should be link two. So I, I'm gonna have here R2 vector as we agreed in addition, we do have R3 vector for the uh, for the link. In addition, we do have for the slider R4 vector and R1 vector, make sense? And you should understand that R2 belongs to the crank, R3 belongs to the link and R4 belongs to the, or refers to the slider. 
and R1 is just an offset distance. So what next? Basically, after that, we have to define the uh, magnitude and the, the, the direction of all of these four vectors and see which, which is already given, which is already unknown, as we discussed before. In addition, we have to decide which is variable, which is constant, or varying with time, which is constant over time. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to have here, let us specify on this side here, the, uh, the direction, the magnitudes for R1, R2, R3, and R4. Make sense? And how about the directions? We're going to have theta 1 and theta 2 in addition to theta 3 and theta 4. Make sense? So if I ask you what is R1, this should be the magnitude of R1 vector and R1 vector, it should be the offset distance and its magnitude is already given by 1.5 inches. So it means that R1 is already given here with 1.5 inches. How about uh, the theta one? Theta one, it should be the angle for the position vector R1, which is already given here by, this should be theta one, agree? Which it should be 90 degree as given. And you should understand, uh, or let us discuss the, for now, yeah, let us discuss the, whatever it, R1 or theta one is variable or constant. So if you can see here, what should be R1? Is it constant or variable? R1, it should be the distance between O, which is like a virtual point here, which it should be this point, right? In addition to, it should be the distance between O and O2. This distance is a fixed distance, which is given by 1.5 inches. And this distance won't gonna change during the motion, the overall motion at any configuration of the mechanism. This distance is a fixed distance. So what does it mean? It means that R1 directly is gonna be constant. So I can, I'm going to say that this should be constant to just going to add letter like C refer to that it is constant. The same thing, by the way, applies for the angle theta one, because angle theta one, this link R1, it won't going to rotate. It's just a fixed length. How about R2? R2, this belongs to the crank and the crank, it should be R2. I defined, I defined I2 between O2 and A, which is already given by 2.5 inches up there. So it means that R2 is already 2.5 five inches and it should be constant by the way why it should be constant because the distance between o to a it won't gonna change during the mechanism motion right agree uh, at any configuration this distance is a fixed distance how about theta 2 theta 2 should be the angle we said that to draw a line from the start point rotate counterclockwise you're gonna find here theta 2 which is already given up there by 30 degrees and theta 2 it should be variable varying over time. Why varying over time? Because as you, at, at any other configuration, you're gonna find a different value for theta two because this crank itself, it should rotate to give a sliding motion to the slider. So it means that theta two intuitively should be var variable, but the R two itself, it should be constant. And theta two is already given by 30 degrees in this case. And this should be variable. So then what next R three? How about R three? R three should be the length the length of the link AB. The link AB, it has a length, which is RAB is already given by 10 inches. And this length is constant. The distance between A and B, it won't gonna change. There is a fixed bar, and it is a fixed length that won't gonna change its length. It means that RAB is a constant. But how about theta three? Theta three should be the angle from the start point as we defined the angle before. Like if you try to draw a line, Horizontal line going to the right from the start point because I assume the direction of R, R3 going from A to B. Then rotate counterclockwise, there, this angle it should be the theta 3 angle, right? And this theta 3, it means that the this angle should be located in the fourth quadrant. Make sense? And this theta 3, it should be varying over time because as you give rotation to the crank, the length should rotate to give a sliding motion to the slider. It means that the link R3 itself is going to rotate. Rotate, it means theta of this link, it should be variable. So the R3, it is a constant of 10 inches, but theta 3, it is unknown. We have no clue how much is R theta 3, but it is variable for this given mechanism, and it is located in the fourth quadrant. So let us plug this data here, or information for the link 3, that it has a length of 10 inches, and it should be constant. 
Theta three is already unknown. We have no clue how much it is, but the, but it is variable and it should be located in the fourth quadrant. Make sense? How about R4? R4, this should belong to the slider itself. So R4, it should be the distance between this virtual point O and the this, this virtual point O and the point P. If I ask you how much of this distance, we have no clue. We don't know how much it is because this is slider basically, it is not given in this case. And generally it shouldn't be given because at any configuration, at any angle theta two, the slider is going to move. So what does it mean? It means that R4, it is unknown, but it is variable. And how much is theta four? Theta four, it should be zero. If you try to draw a line going to the right and try to rotate counterclockwise to hit R4, you directly concede it over, over the R4. It means there is no angle of rotation to find the R4. So it means that theta 4 it should be zero. It is already zero. And remember that this angle, it should be constant. This slider, it won't gonna rotate. It has only one possibility that it slides horizontally. It means that theta 4, it should be constant. But R4, it is unknown. And this is the second unknown, but it is variable. So as you can see, we do have only two unknowns, which it indicate that we're already working as case three. We mentioned that in case that you do have magnitude and direction of two different vectors, this is case three. So this is the third case. And the objective is just in the position analysis is just to find these two unknowns conventionally as we did multiple times before. Make sense? And there is an, an important notice that we said in case that you have an angle, pivotal angle, like common angle, like zero angle, 90, zero or 90, 270, 180 degrees, any one of these types of angles, in case that you have one of the theorists, already given a value and the other condition that this theta should be constant, you can directly, when you form the loop closure equation, directly substitute for these theorists, for these values in the loop closure equation of the position analysis. And this is gonna make the solution more simple, okay? And this is basically what we gonna do. So what next? We gonna move to the next step, which is the position analysis. Make sense so far? All right, so the first, Step basic is to find the position analysis or to make a position analysis for this mechanism. So as you can see here, we we basically start with forming the loop closure equation that if you're gonna see that we do have R1 already going in the same direction as R2, the same direction as R3, but R4 going is going in the opposite direction. So we're gonna say that we do have R1 vector plus R2 vector plus R3 vector equals R4 vector, which should form the loop closure equation. And as is given here, R1, theta1 are known, given, given values. R2, theta2 are given. R3, theta3 is the unknown, and R4 is the unknown, and the other information that are already given. So what does it mean? It means that R1, it should be fully defined R2, it should be fully defined, but R3, it has only one unknown, which is theta three. It means that the direction is unknown, but the magnitude is already known or given. And the same thing here, R4 is unknown, but the direction is already known. So the unknown of this problem are theta three, remember, and R4, these are the unknown. It means that this should be the case three, the third case of the four cases that we discussed before. Then what next? Your objective is just to rewrite again this equation, this loop closure equation in the exponential form. So we're gonna have R1 EI theta one plus R2 EI theta two plus R3 EI theta three equals R4 EI theta four. Before you proceed to the case and follow the steps or the procedure that we explain for case three, we said that it is advised to substitute for any angle that is constant and with a common angle value like 0, 90, 270, 180, which this case applies, applies basically to the theta one and theta four. This is a, non, is a 90 degree and constant. This is, is a zero degree and constant. But if you do have one of these two angles is with 90 or zero or 270, but it is variable, don't substitute with its value. Just leave it at theta one or theta two or whatever, right? So, but here, since we have this one is constant and it is 90, 
It is advised to substitute for the 90 degree, the same thing for the zero degree for theta four, as long as it is constant. And it is advised because it's gonna make the solution more simple. And this is what we're gonna do. If you substitute for theta, um, uh, theta uh, it should be theta one. Theta one is already given by 90 degree. If you substitute for this theta one with 90 degree, this term will be I R one, will be imaginary term. How did we know basic, uh, this, this, how did we know this thing? If you remember the expansion, I'm just gonna do it in a side, but if you, rem if you memorize this term directly that for any exponential term with 90 degrees, this is gonna give a complex value equal the I R1 or the I R. Like generally R1 e I theta one, it should be sub expanded in the, ex uh, in the cosine theta one, plus the i sine theta one. Makes, uh, makes sense? I do have theta one equal 90 degrees. So 90 de degree, it means that this term will be zero, but this term will be one. So it's gonna be one i times r1. There should be r1 here as a common factor, right? So we're gonna end up at the end as i r1, and that's why we do have i r1 here in case that we do have the theta is 90 degrees. So generally for any position vector, in case that theta is already 90 degree automatically is going to be i the r i times the magnitude which is r make sense how about theta 2 theta 2 is just 30 degrees so don't substitute for this value because it is not a common value just get on with theta 2 for now so it's going to be plus it's going to be let me use the same color so it's going to be the plus of r2 ei theta 2 plus r3, theta three is already variable. So even if it is given, and anyway, theta three is unknown, even if it is given with a common value, don't substitute for, with its value because it is anyway variable. Equals r4 because the theta four is already zero. And as you know, even if you would substitute in the, in the expanded form, the trigonometric function form like cosine theta four plus i sine, sine theta four, theta four is already zero, so the sine the zero, it will be zero. It means that the imaginary term will be canceled and you're just gonna end up with cosine zero, which is just one, so you're gonna end up with the real value. So this is the new form and we're gonna give us, we're gonna give this equation as equation one because this one, this is the equation that should be differentiated with respect to time uh, for the velocity and acceleration analysis. As you can see, the equation become more simple, and now we can apply case three. If you remember in case three, the first step was to substitute, is to divide all the terms of the loop closure equation by the exponential term of the of the position vector with the given mag with the unknown magnitude. The one with the unknown magnitude is R four. So what does it mean? It means that if you directly apply it case three, the first step is just to divide all the terms by E i theta four. Now I don't have this term because I substitute for theta four is already zero. So it means that I end up with this equation so I can escape this step for the case three procedure. Now let us move directly to the real and imaginary part, which it should be the second step in the K3 procedure. So the real part it should be, this one is already imaginary, the real part it should be the R2 cosine theta two plus R3 cosine theta three equals R4 is already real, and this is gonna give us equation A. For the imaginary part, we're gonna have, this is already imaginary, so we're gonna include the R1 plus the imaginary of this term, take the sine, so it's gonna be the R2 sine theta two plus this term, the measure of this term will be R3 sine theta three equals zero because there is no imaginary term is here. And this is gonna give us the second equation. Now we end up with two equations that include only two unknowns. So let us substitute with the values here. So R1 is already given by 1.5 inches. Up there is already given by 1.5. R2 is already given by uh, 2.5. R3 is given by 10 inches. Theta three is unknown. Theta three is unknown. R four is already given by the, uh, it is unknown. And theta three is, is given by 10. And theta two is given by 30 degrees. 30 degrees, this should be the angle. And R two is already given by 2.5 inches.
So these are the given data, and we do have only two unknowns, which are the theta two in addition, theta three in addition to the R four. These are the unknowns. So as you can see, that we can easily solve equation B for theta three, and this is what we're gonna do. So solving equation B. So solving equation B for theta three. We're gonna find that theta three. It is better to write the equation itself. It will be the sine inverse of this term. If you just move the other term, so this will be negative R1, negative R2, sine theta 2, divided by the R3. Solving this equation, we're going to end up that theta 3, we're going to find it using the calculator by negative 15.96 degrees. This is what we're going to get from the calculator, right? So then you have to investigate whatever it is located in the correct quadrant as for the given mechanism or not. We, we specified that the theta three should be located in the fourth quadrant and it is as given using the calculator is already, it is already located in the fourth quadrant. So you can just leave this one with the negative 15.96 or you can add 360 degree to this value to write the, if, to get rid, if you decided to get rid and use positive value as we basically define the angle that we did counterclockwise to be positive, it means that we can have the angle by 3, uh, 344.8. 0, 04 degrees. So this should give us the theta 3 uh, angle. Then if you substitute with this angle into equation, substitute into the other equation, which is equation A, we can find a value for R4. So solving for R4, for this one, we're going to find just, just directly plug into this equation A, we're going to find R4 will be 11.78 eight inches. So by these two values, basically we done of the position analysis. Before you pro proceed to the velocity analysis or the acceleration analysis, make sure that there is no requirement in this problem, it is not required to, f there is no requirement related to the position analysis. If, if so, if there is some of the requirement, like for example, if it is required to find the, ab the absolute position of point C, so you have to continue working on the position analysis part. But as you can see, all the requirement in related to the velocity and the acceleration, there is no requirement here that is related to the position analysis. It means nothing else that you should do for the position analysis for this part. Make sense? It means that you can carry on and proceed. But for example, if the position of point C is already required or the displacement of point C is required, it means that you have to continue working on the position analysis part and find the requirement, find the displacement of point C or whatever, depending on the requirement of this problem. But here we don't have nothing except the velocity and the acceleration. It means that we can directly move to the next step, which is the velocity analysis. Make sense? So now let us move to the velocity analysis and this is going to be the second step. As for the velocity analysis, basically we need equation one. We need this equation that we defined above, right? So for the velocity analysis, I've brought this equation, which it should be equation one that already we form it, the loop closure equation of the position analysis. We're going to form another loop closure equation, but for the velocity analysis. And this equation, it should be obtained by differentiating this equation. So simply, if you just differentiate this equation with respect once, with respect to time, we're going to end up with the loop closure equation for the velocity analysis. So what is the derivative? Basically, the derivative of these terms depends on the nature of these r and theta variables or the position variable. And this depends what, which one is variable, which one is constant. So as we defined or specified above here, that you're going to see that all of these parameters, all of them are constant except theta 2, theta 3, and R4. The other are just constant, right? So remember this, theta 2, theta 3, and R4 are variable. There is just constant. So we do have R1 is just constant variable and or parameter and R2 it is constant, theta 2 it is variable, R3 it is constant, theta 3 it is variable and R4 it is variable. 
Make sense? So if I ask you what should be the derivative of this term, which is just include a constant term with respect to time, it should be zero. Plus, so the first term, the derivative of this term will be zero because it is constant. The second term, it have R2 just constant. So I'm just gonna carry on, consider this one as a common factor, and you're just gonna do the derivative to the exponential term, which is gonna give us the theta two dot E i theta two, then you're gonna add pi over two as we discussed before for the plus analysis. Then how about this sec this term? R three is constant as well. Theta three dot e i theta three plus pi over two. Basically, we add pi over two in addition. We multiply times theta dot, and remember that the theta dot this should refer to omega, which is a natural velocity. And how about R two R four? R four is already variable, so it's gonna be R dot as uh, you know, the time derivative. And this is gonna give us the second equation. And this is the equation that we have to differentiate one more, one more time for the acceleration analysis. But before we proceed, we have to specify some things here. It is advised to work as I'm gonna do right now. First, let us investigate the these terms, what they are. For example, if I ask you R2 theta 2 dot, this should refer, so this should be like R omega. So R omega, it means that intuitively you should have a length that rotates. A length that rotates because it is R omega. And this gives a linear velocity of the length 2. If we're going to jump up to the mechanism, what is length 2? Length 2, this connects two points, which are point O2 and A because R2 E i theta two, this is the position vector for R two, so it's derivative with respect to the time they give the velocity that belong to the same length. So this length is a length that rotates about point O. So this velocity that this velocity term that we located down, it should give us the linear velocity of point A with respect to point O two. And in case that the other point that you refer to is a constant point, or I'm sorry, is a fixed point, it means that this velocity will be the absolute velocity of point A. So if I ask you how much is the absolute velocity of point A, you should refer to a fixed point, which is already point O2. So this velocity term that we specified down here, this should belong to the, this one, should belong to the link two, so this should define the velocity of point A with respect to O2 vector, which it should be the velocity of point A directly as an absolute velocity. Why? This is a fixed point. This one is a fixed point. Make sense? So this, for example, if it is required in this problem to find the absolute velocity of point A, this term is the absolute velocity of point A. And you should understand that this term, it should be, this velocity it should be perpendicular. It should be perpendicular to the R2 vector, and it should be rotating in the same direction, in the same follow, and it should be rotate following the theta2 dot direction, which it should be the omega2. Make sense? This is the meaning of this term. How did I know that it should be perpendicular because of this angle pi over two? It has a shift, it has a phase difference between the direction of the position vector itself, because theta two, this is the direction of the position vector itself, and it has a phase shift by pi over two. It means that it should be perpendicular to the R2, and it should be rotating in the direction following the theta two dot as already given here. This is the meaning, the physical meaning of this term. How about this term? It's gonna be the same. It is still R omega, R theta dot, it means R omega. So it should belong to a link. Which link? It should be the link number three. The link number three that we specified up there, it should be this link, which is the connecting link between the crank and the slider, which is link three. This link three connects two points, point A and point P. It means that the derivative of this R3, it should give us the relative velocity of either point A to B or P to A. But since we are moving from A to B, so it should be P, B relative to A, as we agreed. When you write something like R, a relative to B even from the dynamic class. It means that you're gonna move from B to A, right? Or even if you have a position vector of 
from uh, of b relative to a it means that you're gonna move from a to b here i'm moving from a to b it means that the derivative of r3 it means that r3 basically it should be rp relative to a so the derivative of this position vector it should give us vb relative to a make sense so that's why this derivative the term that i highlighted down for the velocity term this term it should belong to the r3 and it should define and and, and it defines the the velocity of point p with respect to point a make sense so if we're gonna go down again we're gonna find that this term which is r3 theta dot it should belong to the uh, or define the velocity of point b with respect to a which is just a relative velocity and that belong to a link and it should be perpendicular to the r3 it should be perpendicular to the r3 vector why it should be perpendicular to the r3 because of this pi over 2 we define this thing and it should follow it should follow the rotation of theta dot 3 which it should be omega dot because theta dot it should be omega uh, 3 it should be omega 3 which is the natural uh, natural uh, velocity or the angular velocity of the length 3. Make sense? How about R4? R, R dot R dot indicate V, a linear velocity of something that is slides. This is a linear velocity. There is no length here. There is no rotation. So just a sliding velocity. And in case that you don't have R dot, it should belong to a slider. So the slider, the sliding thing that we already have is just one slider, which is slider B. And we define this for this slider R4 up there, here, right? It means that the time derivative of this R4, it should give us the velocity of the slider B. And this is what we already have. But remember that the R4 is already connected to points, point O and P. So it means that, and it moves from O to B. So it means that this one, it should be like the R B relative to O vector, which it should directly R B vector because B O is a fixed point. We can write R4 in this form. Make sense? But since we already have here R4, you should understand that this defines the position vector of point B with respect to point O. It means that the time derivative of R4 gives the velocity of point B with respect to a fixed point, which is point O. So what does it mean? It means that the time derivative here of R4 gives the absolute velocity of point P with respect to point O. And this is what we're gonna have here. So we're gonna say that this R4, R4, it should give us the R, this should be the velocity of the slider B. And as you can see, it should be parallel to the R4 vector because there should be here like EI theta four, but since theta four is already zero, so that's why this term is already one. Make sense? So it means that the VB it is parallel to R4. What does it mean parallel R4? Parallel to R4, it doesn't mean that it is in the same direction of R4. It is parallel, yes, but the parallel would be in the same direction or in the opposite direction, but it is parallel to the R4. So generally, VB, it is parallel, and we have no clue yet. So far, we have no clue whatever VB, it is in the same direction of R4 or in the opposite direction of R4, but we are pretty sure that it is parallel to the R4. Make sense? So you have to specify these things. I advise you to specify these things before you proceed further for the philosophy analysis to know exactly what are these terms referred to. Then the next step basically is just to specify which one of these dot things like theta dot, r dot, which one is already given, which one is not given or unknown, and which one is constant, which one is variable to proceed further. So, and this is what we're gonna do. So we do have here, let us use a different color. We do have three things that include dots, right? We do have the theta two dot, and we do have theta three dot, and we do have R four dot. Make sense? For the velocity analysis, we can solve or do velocity analysis for two unknowns. So it means that we do have three things that include dots, right? And it means that only one of them should be given and the rest, the other two will be unknown and we have to solve for them, right? So theta two dot, it should be omega two, which is omega two, which is already given up there by 30 radian per second. Theta two, if we gonna go up to this problem, omega two, which is the natural, the uh, constant, it has 
a constant philosophy of theory written per second he talks about the crank and this crank which is rotates with the omega 2 For, there are lots of things that we should understand here that the value of theta 2 dot which is omega 2 should be 30 radian per second this is the value in addition it is a constant it means that it has no time derivative so it should be constant and in addition it rotates in the clockwise direction and we mentioned that in case that you have a natural frequency an angular frequency our angular velocity that rotates in the clockwise direction should be negative and it will be positive in case that it rotate to the counterclockwise direction. Make sense? So it means that the value for theta 2 dot it should be negative 30 radian per second and it should be constant. Make sense? But how about theta 3 dot? We have no clue. How about of r4 dot? We have no clue. Which r4 dot refers to the sliding velocity of the slider and it is not given. You probably may be given the same mechanism but the information will be different. And instead of giving you the angular velocity of the crank, I would give you the sliding velocity of length of the slider B. It means that R4 dot will be given and the theta 2 dot and theta 3 dot will be unknown. But for this given mechanism, we do have a different thing. We do have the theta 2 dot is already given by negative 30 radian per second. Why negative? Because the omega 2 direction was given as clockwise direction. But theta 2 dot, theta 3 dot, r4 dot, they are unknown. The angular velocity of this link, the sliding velocity of the slider B were not given, right? So it means that we gonna move down here to the this part and we're gonna say that theta 2 dot, it should be the negative 30 degrees and I'm sorry, uh, uh, negative 30 radian per second. And you should understand that it is constant value. But how about theta 3 dot? It is unknown. And we have to consider it as variable. We have no clue whatever it is constant or variable. So you have to deal with it like a variable. The same thing applies to the R4 dot. It is not given. And he didn't mention, since he didn't mention clearly that R4 or the sliding velocity of the slider it is constant, so you have to deal with it like a variable. So other than that, if he directly mentioned that the sliding velocity of the slider or the angular velocity of the length 3 is constant or uniform, so we're going to consider it constant. But here for theta dot, he literally mentioned that theta 2 dot, which is omega 2, it is a constant, so that's why I'm going to deal with this one as a constant. If he didn't mention that, I'm just going to consider it as a variable. Make sense? Then your objective is just to solve these two, this equation in only two unknowns, which are theta 3 dot and r4 dot. How we can solve this equation? We have to decompose this all the terms into their trigonometric terms, which are the cosine and the sine terms. For the first term, it just during the second term, it should be expanded into like r2 theta 2 dot, and we do have the cosine theta 2 plus pi over 2 plus i sine theta 2 plus pi over 2, and we're going to have a, bracket, a parenthesis here, or a square bracket to confine this term. This is for the first term. The expansion of the second term, this gives us the plus the r3, this term, which is going to be like r3 theta 3 dot. Then we're going to open a square bracket. We're going to have here the cosine of theta 3 plus pi over 2 <coughs> plus i sine theta 3 plus pi over 2 and this is going to give us the second term the, th the last term which is on the right hand side which is the r4 dot there is no expansion for this term then we have to decompose or you know like collect the real terms and the imaginary terms of this equation while you collect these terms you can consider some relations here like as we mentioned before you have, it is advised to memorize, or you can even try these relations uh, or demonstrate these relations using the calculator. That we said that the cosine of theta plus pi over two, this gives us a negative of sine theta. In addition, the sine of theta plus pi over two equal the cosine theta. Just recall these quantities and relations and plug them here. So we're gonna end up with the real term, the real term will be R2 
theta to dot. The cosine theta plus pi over 2 becomes negative sine theta 2. Make sense? I'm collecting the real term. The real term is just the cosine, but the cosine theta plus pi over 2 gives negative sine theta 2. This is an imaginary term. Skip this term. Move to the second term here, which is the r3 theta 3 dot. Then I'm going to consider the cosine. The cosine of theta 3 plus pi over 2 gives negative theta 3. So I'm going to have a, here a negative, negative r3 theta 3 dot sine theta 3. This one is an imaginary term equals r4 dot and this is going to give us the equation A. This is for the real part. The imaginary part is going to be the same. It's going to be r2 theta 2 dot and I'm going to pick the sine. The sine of theta plus pi over 2 gives positive cosine. So this is going to give us the cosine theta 2 and then this, I'm going to collect the imaginary term. It's going to have like plus r3 theta 3 dot and we do, we're going to have the cosine theta 3 equals 0. It, this should give us the second equation, which is equation B. The, this term is already ha, has no imaginary terms. Then we do have some given things and we do have some unknowns. So let us investigate which is given, which is unknown. Theta R2 is already given by 2.5 inches. Theta 2 is given by negative 30 radian per second. It should be negative, as we discussed. Why negative? Because the angular velocity omega 2 is rotating in the clockwise direction. Theta 2 is given by 30 degrees. And the... Uh, what else? Yes. And we do have the R3 is already given by 10 inches. We have no clue how much is theta dot. This is one of the unknowns. Theta 3, we got it. We got it by 300 44 degrees in the position analysis. The same thing here, this value is 344 degrees. This theta is unknown. And we do have R3, we got it by 11.78 inches. In addition, theta two is already 30 degrees. Theta two dot is negative 30 degree, uh, 30 radian per second, while R2 is already 2.5. So as you can see here, in this, an R4 is the second unknown. We do have two unknowns, which are the R4 dot in addition to the theta 3 dot. So it is easy for us to find theta 3 dot by directly solving the second equation or equation B. So solving equation B, we're going to end up that theta 3 dot, and you should understand that this should give us the angular velocity of length 3, which is omega, 3, we're going to find omega 3 is given by 6.75 radian per second. What does it mean that omega 3 is positive? This indicates that it is counterclockwise direction. This is the correct direction for omega 3. Then if you plug theta 3 dot into equation A, we can find R from equation A, we're going to find that R for dots Solving for R4 dot, we're going to find it by 56.07 inch per second. So, and it's going to be positive. What does it mean it's going to be positive? It means that this should give us the VB. This is the velocity, the sliding, this is the sliding of velocity. This is the sliding velocity of the slider itself. And it should be parallel in the same direction, in the same direction, same direction as R4 vector. Why it is in the same direction as R4 vector? Because it is positive. If it is negative, it means that it should go in the opposite direction to the R4. Make sense? It means that it is already going to the right. This is, this is the direction of this sliding velocity. It should be sliding to the right. So this is for the velocity analysis, and you have to skim very quick for what is given here, or the requirement, I'm sorry. The, it is required to find the angular velocity. The angular velocity, we, we didn't proceed to the acceleration yet. So the angular velocity of length EB, the angular velocity of length EB, which is omega-3, which we already got it down there, so we got this one. Absolute, uh, absolute velocity of the slider. The absolute velocity of the slider it should be, as we mentioned, should be VB relative to O because you're going to refer to a fixed point like point O and this is the easiest point. 
And this is absolute velocity. This is what we got for VB down there. So we already got this value as well. How about the absolute velocity of point C? We can skip since point C is already outside the loop, outside the closure loop that we formed in the beginning, skip this one and just keep this C point, any extra point that is outside the loop, just leave this one till the end of the problem. Once you finish the position, velocity and acceleration analysis, you can find anything else related to the point C, whatever it is, position, velocity or acceleration. Make sense? It means that half of point A, half of point two, uh, point one, half of point one, half of point two, we got these requ two requirements. But for point three and the acceleration parts, we have no clue yet. We have to proceed further for the acceleration analysis. Make sense? Then now let us move to the acceleration analysis part. So let us move to the acceleration analysis. And I've brought this equation too from the velocity analysis. This is the second equation, the loop closure equation of the velocity that should be differentiated with respect to time to end up with the loop closure equation for the acceleration analysis. And this is what we are going to do. But in the beginning, we have to define which one of these parameters are variable, which one is constant, like or varying over time and or constant. So we do have R2 is already constant here, right? We do have R2 is already constant. As we discussed, this should be the length of the crank. Theta 2 dotted is constant because it is literally mentioned in the problem that we have a constant angle of result for the crank. And theta 2 is variable because this refers to the rotation of the crank. R3 is constant. This is just a length. Theta 3 dot, it is variable. He didn't say anything about theta 2 dot, theta 3 dot, which is the angular velocity of the velocity of the length. Uh, three and the same thing for theta three, it should be variable because this is the rotation of the link and R4 dot. The same thing applies here where he didn't mention anything about the sliding velocity, whatever of the slider, whatever it is constant or variable. So I have to deal with it like a variable. And intuitively, he asked about the angular acceleration, the, sli the sliding acceleration of the slider itself. So it means that I should deal with this one as a variable. Then what we're going to do, we're just going to differentiate this equation once with respect to the time, which is going to give us the first term intuitively it should be zero. The second term, we're going to have R2 theta 2 dot R constant. So we do have here R2 theta 2 dot R constant. So we're going to have these terms as a common factor, then we're going to do the, the derivative with respect to theta 2, which is just the variable term. So we're going to end up with another theta 2 dot, which it should be squared here, because you're going to multiply times another theta 2 dot times EI theta, and you're going to add another pi over 2 over the pi over 2 that we already have. So we're going to end up with pi, and this should be theta 2. Plus, how about this one? R3 is a constant term, so we're going to have this one as a common, and then we're going to open a square bracket because we do have two terms that are variable. So we're going to have the derivative of the multiplication of two functions. So we're going to fix one function and differentiate the other one. Like, let us fix the theta 3 dot and differentiate with this, this one with respect to theta 3, uh, theta 3 with respect to the time. So we're going to end up with theta 3 dot, which it should be squared. EI theta 3 plus pi, because we're going to add pi over 2 plus the pi over 2, this gives pi. And then we're going to fix the second term, which is the exponential term. Then we're going to do the derivative over theta 3 dot to be theta 3 double dot. And we're going to have the I theta 3 plus pi over 2. Make sense? Equals. So this is for the third term. The fourth term, which is the R4, it should be R4 double dot because it is already variable with respect to the time. And this is going to give us the third equation. And basically, there is no further thing that we can do in according to the classical kinematics or mechanics that we were using through this course. So there is no further time derivative that we have to do for this for this equation. But anyway, this is the third equation, which is the loop closure equation for the acceleration. Again, let us investigate this equation. Let us investigate the different terms of this equation. Even if you just keep, have a look to the mechanism in your mind, you're gonna see that R2 theta two dot square, this should be like R omega square. And R omega square, it should give us an, an, a, 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 a 
a normal acceleration. So this should be the normal acceleration of something, right? So this is like a normal for something. This something it should be linked to, and link to connects point A to O2. It means that this should be the normal acceleration of point A with respect to O2. And since O2 is a fixed point, it means that we're gonna say that this is the normal acceleration of the point A or the absolute normal acceleration of point A. And as you can see, it should be in the opposite direction of the R2 direction because there is pi. It means that you switch the direction. So it should be opposite to opposite to the R2 vector. Make sense? So this is for this term. How about this? And nothing else, right? We don't have any other terms here for uh, for this for this one how about the tangential component because any acceleration for any point that belongs to to any object that rotates and the crank which is o to a it rotates it means that point o it point a itself it has two components of the acceleration one is normal that goes opposite to the r2 one is tangential that it should be perpendicular to the r2 but this tangential term is zero here because theta dot, the tangential term requires theta two double dot. And since theta two is already constant, it means there is no theta two double dot. It means that the tangential term it is zero. So that's why there is no tangential term for the length. Just for this mechanism, because he mentioned that the theta two or this, because the crank rotates with a constant angular velocity. But how about the length three? Length three, since we are talking about a link, the link intuitively should have two components of the acceleration. Any point, it should have two components of the acceleration. One component that is normal, the second component that is tangential. So that's why we have two terms here, two components. The first one, R3 times theta three dot square. It means that this should be R3 omega square, which it should be the normal acceleration. So this is a normal acceleration, but R3 theta three double dot, this should be like R3 alpha because theta double dot gives alpha. So this should be the tangential component of what? Of point B relative to A as a vector as we discussed with the velocity. It means that R3 was going from A to B. It means that should be B, uh, B with respect to A. And this the same, it should be the B relative to a vector. But as you can see that the normal component, it should be opposite to the R3 because there is a by shift. So it should be opposite to the R3 vector. But how about this component? It should be perpendicular. It should be perpendicular to the R3 vector. Follow and follow the direction of alpha three, which it should be the theta three double dot. Make sense? It should follow the alpha three, which is the theta three double dot. How about this term? This term intuitively, R double dot should be acceleration. So this is the linear acceleration and it should be for point B with respect to O, which is, we can say that this is the absolute acceleration of point B because point O is already a fixed point. And this is the sliding acceleration of the slider. Why this one belongs to the slider? Because it is R4 and R4, we defined this one in the beginning of this, problem for R4 was specified to the slider itself. So any time derivative to the R4 gives either velocity or acceleration of the slider. And since we do have R double dot, it means that this is the angular acceleration, uh, the, uh, the linear acceler acceleration of the slider or the sliding acceleration of the slider itself. Make sense? So these are the different components to understand them well and their directions. Then we have to find the unknowns, right? And figure out what is given, what is not given. Here we are solving for anything that is with double dot because we find all the R and theta's, we find all the things that we inc that include dot. Here we are seeking the things that include double dot. We do have two unknowns, two things that include our double dot, which are theta three double dot and R four double dot. So it means both of them are unknown and nothing else is already given. Uh, it means that we can directly solve this equation by decomposing or collecting the real part and the imaginary part as usual. So if we did so, let us first write these terms in their exponential and in their trigonometric form. So we're going to have here like the R2 theta 2 dot square. This term will, will, will be cosine theta 2 plus pi plus i sine theta 2 plus pi 
and the second term will be r3 this term theta 3 dot square times the cosine of theta 3 plus pi plus the i sine theta 3 plus pi plus there is another term which is r3 theta 3 double dot then we're gonna have the cosine of theta 3 plus pi over 2 plus i sine theta 3 plus pi over 2 all of this should equal to the r4 double dot make sense once we find expanded this one we can collect the real terms the real term and the imaginary term so the real term take the cosine but you have to recall some of these trigonometric relations which are for the in addition to these two that we discussed before which are the cosine we mentioned that the cosine of theta plus pi over 2 this gives negative sine theta in addition the cosine of I'm sorry the sine the sine of theta plus pi over 2 this gives positive cosine theta how about the cosine of theta plus pi and the sine of theta plus pi so the cosine theta plus pi gives the negative cosine theta but this one gives a positive or also gives a negative sine theta so just recall these quantities and these relations and use them here for the real part so the real part we just gonna collect the cosine terms but we're gonna do the change automatically like for example we can have here r2 theta 2 dot square how about this cosine theta 2 plus y cosine theta plus y gives negative cosine theta so this should be like negative cosine theta 2 i'm gonna skip the, the imaginary term then i'm gonna move to this term which it should be like i don't know whatever it is positive or negative just leave it negative r3 theta 3 dot square then the cosine theta 3 plus pi theta plus pi gives negative cosine theta 3 then i'm gonna skip the imaginary term then move to this one will be r3 theta 3 double dot cosine theta plus pi over 2 cosine theta plus pi over 2 gives negative so it should be negative sine theta 3 then i'm gonna skip the imaginary term equals r4 double dot this is a real term and this is gonna give us the equation a how about the imaginary part we're gonna do the same we're gonna have r2 theta 2 dot square then sine theta plus pi sine theta 2 plus pi equals negative sine theta 2 negative the r3 theta 3 dot square then the sine theta plus pi gives negative sine so it's gonna be negative sine theta 3 negative the r3 sine theta 3 double dot and this should be sine theta plus pi over 2 sine theta plus pi over 2 gives positive so it should be positive cosine theta 3 equals 0 there is no imaginary terms on the right side so we're going to end up with these two equations that include everything it should be given if let us record the values r2 is already given by 2.5 inches and theta 2 dot we got it uh, or it is already given by negative 30 radian per second but since it will be squared so this negative will be uh, cancelled but anyway and theta 2 is already given by 30 degrees and r3 is already given by 10 inches theta 3 dot we got it we got it by the 6.75 radian per second theta 3 we got it by 344 degrees and theta 3 double dot we have no clue how much it is it is one of the unknowns but r3 we it is already given by 10 and 10 inches and theta 3 is already given by 344 degrees and this is the second unknown here theta 3 is given by 344 degrees and the this is the first unknown this is one of the unknowns and the 10 inches which is r3 theta 3 344 degrees theta 3 dot which is already we got it by 6.75 will be squared and the 10 which is r3 and 2.5 for the r2 
in addition to the negative 30, uh, 30 radian per second and the 30 degrees for the angle theta 2. If we substitute with all of these data, we're going to find that we have two unknowns, theta double dot, three, and the R4 double dot. And we can easily solve the first equation that should be solved, which is equation B. So solving equation B, we're going to find that theta three double dot, which should be alpha three. This is the angular acceleration of the length three. Alpha 3, we're going to find it by 103.97 radian per second square because it is acceleration. And as you can see, we got it positive. It means that it rotates counterclockwise direction. Okay, it rotates counterclockwise direction, which is the same direction of omega 3 as we got it before. It means that we do have acceleration, we do have an increase. This length takes an increase in the axial, in the velocity. The velocity of length three will, the angular velocity of length three is going to increase. But in case that you have alpha is in, an, in, in a direction that is opposite to omega, it means that this alpha indicate deceleration, a decrease in the velocity of the length, okay? But here it is in the same direction of the omega three, it means that this is an increase, there is an increase in the velocity of the length Three. How about R4? If you plug this theta 3 double dot into the first equation, which is equation uh, A, and then solve for R4 double dot, which should give us the acceleration of the slider B, this is going to give us the R4 with negative 2100.71 inch per second square. So what does it mean, this negative? This negative indicates, this negative indicates that the acceleration of B equals 2,100.71 inch per second, and the direction of this acceleration, it should be to the left. Opposite, it should be opposite, opposite to R4 vector. Why? We got it negative. So what does it mean that this acceleration is opposite. If you remember that we got VB in the same direction of R4, but now we are getting the acceleration of the slider in the opposite direction of R4. So what does it mean? It means that the slider is gonna is going to slow down, but the length three is going to accelerate. So there is acceleration for the length three at this instant of time, but the slider is going to decelerate. There is a decrease in the sliding velocity of the slider at this instant of time. After a while, the th things will change, but this is what we do have at this current configuration when theta two is equals 30 degrees. Make sense? So now we should finish and we should get everything in this problem, but let us check again the requirement to make sure we finish the position, velocity and acceleration analysis. So let us check the requirement. It is required to find the angular velocity of link EB, we got it, which is omega three, and the angular acceleration of link EB also we got it, which is alpha three, we got it by negative 2,100.71 radian, uh, radian per second square. It means that it rotates in the, uh, in, uh, in the same direction. I'm sorry, no, we got the alpha three, we got it by the 103.97 uh, radian per second square and it is clockwise direction. How about the absolute velocity and acceleration of the slider B? We got both of them. We got VB and EB, and they are in two opposite direction. VB in the same direction as R4, but EB in the opposite direction. The absolute velocity and acceleration of point C. This is, we didn't find this one yet. The absolute velocity and the acceleration of point C. So now let us, so it means that we have done, we find everything regarding point two, we done of point one and two, so we still need to work over point three, the absolute velocity and acceleration of point C. To find velocity or acceleration for any point, we won't gonna able to do it unless we find the position of this point first. So we have to set up a position vector for point C, then we can differentiate this position vector once with respect to time to find the velocity, then we gonna differentiate one more time to find the acceleration. So it means that we have to start from the position again. But he asked for the absolute things, whatever it is, position, velocity, or acceleration. Absolute, it means that we have to refer to a fixed point. 
Through this mechanism, we have two fixed points, one fixed point, which is physical point, which is point O2, and there is a virtual point, which is point O. So to find the absolute position or absolute velocity or absolute acceleration of point C, you should refer point C to point either point O2 or O. It is easy for us definitely to refer to point O2. It is simple. So it means that we have to set up another R, a position vector between O2 to C. And it should be going to the point that you are seeking its velocity or acceleration or position, position that we're going to move as we usual. We said that it is a preferred to move from, from the fixed point to the other point. So I'm going to set up a position vector between O2 and C. This position vector will have a fixed length because the distance between O2 and C it is a fixed distance where the distance between O2 and C is it is already given by 5 inches because O2A is 2.5 inches and AC is, is 2.5. So in total, we do have 5 inches as a length. So this position vector has a fixed magnitude, has fixed R, but it, its direction will be theta 2, which is already given here by 30 degrees. So, but this theta 2 is variable. So this is the position vector that we're going to set up for point C. So we're going to go down back here to further work on the things that belong to point C. So now I'm going to work on the uh, step four or the fourth thing that we have to do that we are seeking the velocity and the acceleration of point C. So, as we agreed that we have to set up a position vector between point O2, point O2, which is a fixed point, and point C. And remember that this length is already given by 5 inches, as we calculated above. There was like point E here. And there should be like an angle theta 2, which is already given by 30 degrees. And you should understand that R, we're going to give a position vector for this one, like RC vector. And you should understand that the RC, which is the magnitude of this vector, it, it, it equals 5 inches and it is constant. And the direction of this vector, which is theta C, C it will equal to the theta 2, which it should be given by 30 degrees and it is variable. It varies because it rotates. Make sense? So if we decided to set up the RC vector, it will be the RC EI theta C. Make sense? Which is already given R C as 5 E I theta, 5 inches, theta C, which is already theta uh, C, just 30 degrees. But don't substitute with its value because it is variable. Anything that is variable, just leave it in the simple form. But that is fine to substitute for R C or just keep R C, R C here, it's up to you. Okay? So this is for the position. For the velocity of point C, we, get, we are going to differentiate this term. So RC is constant. How about this term? The derivative of the exponential term gives theta C dot EI theta C plus pi over 2. It means that this angular velocity will be perpendicular to this RC direction. And it follows the direction of the theta C dot. Make sense? How much, the question is, how much is theta theta c dot how much it is it should be equal to the theta 2 dot which it should be omega 2 which is already given by 30 radian per second how why because point c and point a both located over the same link right and this link rotates with angular velocity omega 2 which is already given by 30 radian per second and it is constant. So what does it mean it is constant? It means that theta c double dot it should be zero. Why? This term was constant. But remember that this theta it should be negative. Why negative? Because it rotates clockwise direction. So if you decided to substitute with the values here, rc is already given by 5 inches times negative 30 radian per second, EI theta C plus pi over 2. Make sense? Then you can do this calculation, which is going to give us like negative 150. 150 as a value. And the direction here, 
the direction it should be the angle it should be theta c, c, c which is 30 degrees plus 90 degrees this is gonna give us 180 120 i'm sorry 120 degrees okay so for now and even we can specify the direction exactly what is the direction for um this velocity term over the uh the mechanism itself but anyway it has an angle it is oriented perpendicular with a 120 degree with respect or 90 degree with respect to the link itself perpendicular and its value the velocity the absolute velocity value of point c it is it equals 150 uh, inch per second how about the acceleration of point c we're gonna differentiate one more time this equation which is this first equation equation one okay so differentiating this equation rc is constant theta c dot it is constant right so that's why theta c double dot it is zero so these two terms these rc theta c dot are constant then we're gonna do the derivative with respect to theta c which is gonna give us theta c squared ei theta c plus plus pi make sense then we do have only this should be like a normal acceleration this is just only normal acceleration that goes opposite to the position vector direction and how much is rc rc is already given by five inches times the negative 30 radian per second square and ei theta c plus pi so we're gonna end up with this value which is gonna be 4500 it's gonna be positive ei theta c plus pi it means that the direction or the, the magnitude of this acceleration will be 4400 uh, inch, per, uh, inch per second square but its direction will be which is going to add 180 degrees over this value which is going to give us at the end 210 degrees inch per second square this is going to give us the acceleration the absolute acceleration of the point c and this is the absolute velocity of point c as required in the uh, third requirement make sense how about if it is required if it is required to represent the directions of all the velocity and the acceleration component that we indicated here over the mechanism up there okay so it means that we have to recall the equation and the thing that we specified for the velocity loop closure equation as well as for the acceleration loop closure equation and this is what we're going to do next so i've recalled these two equations this is the second equation that we did or we drive it for the closure this is the loop closure equation for the closure analysis and these are the things that we indicated down and in addition this should be the the equation equation for the acceleration analysis and these are the things that we indicated down so let us represent here the velocity components over this mechanism so um to do so it's gonna be very simple let us uh, just follow the instructions here there is no there is zero term skip this one the first component that we do have if v is v a relative to o2 which is the absolute velocity of point a this is the absolute velocity of point a which it should be directed like like it is like you're already going from o2 to a as we discussed before right so this is the absolute velocity and it should be perpendicular to the r2 and follow the direction of omega 2 the same thing here it follows the direction of omega 3 so the first thing before you locate any directions for the velocity the, for the linear velocity identify the directions of omega 2 omega 3 omega 2 as given up there for this problem was given in this direction this is the omega for omega this is the direction for omega 2 but how about the direction of omega 3 omega 3 was given in this direction we got it as positive clockwise direction if you remember down there so it means that omega 3 is already clockwise direction so this is the direction of omega 3 there is no omega for r4 there is no omega for r1 because this is a fixed uh, link or a fixed position vector has no velocity at all no, uh, neither acceleration but this one has velocity and acceleration but they are linear there is no omegas here 
or alphas for this R4. So we do have only two R's, two position vectors that include, that will have time derivative to have some angular velocity component. So that's why we identify omega 2 and omega 3 as already given. Then move to this one, A2, VA vector. It should be perpendicular to the R2, but follow the direction of omega 2. It means that if you try to draw a line that is perpendicular, to the R2 direction, perpendicular to the R2 direction, it should have either to go down, this is the perpendicular, right, direction. You'd have either to go down or jump up, depending on what, depending on the direction of omega 2. Omega 2 is going down, so it means that the correct direction for VA vector, which is the velocity of point A, the absolute velocity of point A, it should be in this direction. Make sense? I've finished the first term, the second term, it should be perpendicular to the R3, so this is the perpendicular to the R3. Draw a line that is perpendicular to the R3. But is, is it gonna go up or down? It's gonna go up in the same direction as omega 3. And this component of the plus rate is VB relative to A, so it is VB relative to A vector. Make sense? So we fill in this one. How about this term? It should be the R4 dot. And the R4 dot, we got it down there in the same direction of, it should be parallel to the R4. So you're gonna draw just a line that is parallel to the R4 to in indicate VB component, which is the sliding velocity of the link P. And it should be in the same direction because we got R4 dot down there, we got it positive, which indicated that it should be in the same direction of the R4, if you remember. So this is the direction of the VB direction. Make sense? So if we, we finish the velocity component, let us move to the acceleration component. For the acceleration component, we have to identify the directions of alphas, which are the angular accelerations. We have here only one alpha, there is no alpha for the link, for the second link. So that's why it has no tangential component of the acceleration. So we have only one component of the alpha, which is this component, which is alpha three. And if you remember, we got it, we got it in the same direction as omega three, we got it clockwise, counterclockwise direction. It means that it rotates in the same direction. This should be alpha three in the same direction as omega three, which indicated that we do have an increase in the velocity or the angular velocity of the link three or the link AB. Make sense? Then let us go over these components of the acceleration. The first component here is a normal acceleration that is opposite to the R2 that define the absolute acceleration of link A. So this should be opposite to the R2 and this should be the acceleration of link A, the absolute acceleration of link A, which it should be the normal component and the only component. So it's gonna be the overall component or the resultant component of point A with respect to O2, it should be the A normal vector. Make sense? So we got this term. How about these two terms? These two terms belong to the B relative to A. It means that belong to the length three because there are R3, theta three, everything is three here. It means that this belong to the third length, R3. This one, it should be opposite to the R3. R3 is going down. It means that we do have one component of the acceleration that, that is going up opposite to the R3 and this component it should be the normal component which it should be, be uh, which it should be the a b relative to a normal component but how about the other component which is the tangential component it should be perpendicular to the R3 follow alpha 3 perpendicular so this is the perpendicular direction so I'm gonna draw a line that is perpendicular to the R3 and it should follow so it should jump up go in the same direction as alpha 3 and this component it should be the a b relative to a vector but this should be the tangential component this should be the tangential component vector of a b relative to a make sense how about this component the r4 double dot this should be the acceleration and it should be parallel it should be parallel here parallel to the r4 Victor. Parallel it doesn't mean that it should be in the same direction or opposite direction. This depends on the sign of the R4 double dot that we got down. We found that R4 we got it by negative 2100.71. It means that negative, this indicates that it goes opposite to the R4 if you remember. So it means that we would have another component that belongs to the acceleration here, which is the AB vector that is opposite to the R4 as we got it down. So these are the different components of the velocity and the acceleration 
components and how they already their directions over the mechanism as given here. Make sense? And I think that's it for uh, this problem that here we consider this mechanism and we did, we, uh, I've tried like to cover all the possible cases and requirement that we would have for a problem like this one. The only difference, if you just stick to the procedure and practice well, the only difference will be another mechanism. So you're just gonna stick to the procedure. You're gonna uh, uh, do the same. Uh, so I think that's it for this video. And uh, in the next video, I'm gonna solve another example that would include a slider over a link. Uh, so this way that we gonna end up with the uh, Coriolis acceleration will show up. And this is what we're gonna discuss the